So the fourth component, solar panels. Solar panels were the second biggest contributor to cutting our carbon footprint, about 14 tons per year. They saved us a lot of money, $5,000 or more. The net investment after tax breaks and subsidies was $42,000 and pays for itself in seven years, a 13% after tax return on investment. Now that's from the cost savings alone. In addition, the Department of Energy estimates that our house value has increased by $111,000 from installing the solar panels alone. That's more than double our investment in the solar panels themselves. And in fact, it's more than our investment in all of the power poor combined. Now this house price increase is, um, means you no longer have to wait for the payback period to get your money back. Um, people have often made the excuse that, hey, this is gonna take seven years. I'm not gonna be in my house for seven years, so why do solar panels? Well, here's your answer. The DOE estimates that you'll get your money back the next year if you were to sell your house the next year through the house price increase. You don't have to wait the seven years to get the return on investment. So now it makes financial sense to install solar panels even if you're planning to move in a few years. This is a breakthrough in my opinion because cutting your, house price, cutting your carbon footprint increases your house price. So how does a solar panel work? Well, the physics is fairly complicated, but it doesn't really matter because they're fairly simple things. They just sit on your roof forever. Um, the warranty is typically 25 years and they'll probably last for 40 years making electricity for you. So light from the sun comes from the left in this picture, hits the solar panel, some fancy quantum mechanics happens and um, electricity comes out the other side. And the electricity that comes from a uh, solar panel is DC or direct current. Electricity, that's the same type as is used in a battery or in your car. That is different to what's used in your house, which is AC or alternating current. So DC is converted to AC with, with a device called an inverter. The AC power then flows to your meter. When you install solar panels, your ele electric utility will replace your meter with a net meter. And a net meter reads the, the power flowing both ways, both from the grid and from the solar panels and calculates the net amount and that's what you're billed for by your utility. So one question people have about solar panels is what happens at night? What happens on cloudy days? Will I ever run out of power? And the answer is no, you won't because that net meter leaves you connected to the grid. You are not going off grid. You're not going out of the woods. This is a um, everyday solution. You will always have your lights on. You'll always have power. And this shows our solar power generation over the course of a year each day. And you can see the day-to-day -day variation is very significant. The, the seasonal variation is very significant. The day-to-night variation is very significant. And it's all invisible to you. Invisible, that is, except when you see your electric bills, which will now be much lower. So this is our net meter on day one of our solar panels. And uh, you could be forgiven for thinking that we've generated 99,999 kilowatt hours of electricity. But we have not. This is a net meter. It goes up when we use electricity from the grid, and it goes down when we export excess electricity to the grid. This started at zero, 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 zero. But like a car's odometer, net meters do not show negative numbers, they spin backwards. So this is the first kilowatt hour that we exported to the grid. We are now a power station on the grid, which I think is kind of cool. Um, so this 99,999 is actually minus one. Uh, financially, let's just go over this. So our array was bought in 2016. Um, the gross cost was $76,000. The federal tax credit back then was 30%, it's now 26%. The mass tax credit was a thousand bucks, it's still a thousand bucks. The present value of the mass SREC income, which is the old subsidy scheme, the new subsidy scheme called SMART, I'll talk about in just a moment, was 29,000, give us a net cost of 23,000, which means the power is produced at seven cents per kilowatt hour, which compares to Eversource today at 24. So this is a huge reduction in your electricity bill for using solar panels. The net present value, which is roughly the profit I make on the investment is $23,000, it's a lot of money. And the IRR or, or rate of return, return on investment is 12% per year. Again, that's after tax. Uh, it breaks even or pays for itself in eight years. In addition to that, the DOE estimates our house price increased $71,000 from this array. Um, and and that, uh, that solar electricity price of seven cents is fixed for 25 years. Um, it will not increase by the roughly 3% a year that electric prices have increased in Massachusetts. Now, this is our second array installed about 18 months later on our garage. Um, the gross cost has come down significantly from 76 to 56. The federal tax credit was still 30%, the mass tax credit still 1,000. The present value of the mass SREC income, 23,000, so the net cost is 14. Now, just compare that, 23, the net cost, 
has fallen to 14,000 on a bigger solar panel array in less than two years. That's how much um, solar panels are coming down in price. This array generates power at 5 cents per kilowatt, kilowatt hour compared to Eversource at 24 cents per kilowatt hour. My total profit is 29,000. My IRR is 14% and it takes seven years to pay for itself. Now, these are under the old subsidy scheme called SREC. The new subsidy scheme is called SMART. And I've just completed a round of bidding for one of my clients, which came in the four to six cents per kilowatt hour range. This is unbelievably cheap solar electricity. Um, so what was good value in 2016 is even better value in 2020. And that is despite increasing tariffs and declining subsidies. That's basically because solar panels have fallen in price during that period. So these kind of low costs for solar power make even less than ideal roofs good places to make uh, electricity today. So if you've been told in the past that your solar, that your roof did not make good sense for solar panels, it was too shady, it's time to revisit that because solar panels are now so cheap, you can make power very cheaply, even from arrays that are in semi-shaded roofs. Uh, this is how to do the proper financial evaluation of solar panels, which I've never seen done by um, solar panel installers. The details of all this are in the book. Um, you don't actually need to do this. You can just use the Energy Sage website, which is run by the Department of Energy, um, and it's, uh, it does all the, all the uh, financial analysis for you on the same basis, so you don't need to do this. But if you do want to do it, the details are in the book. This is our first solar panels uh, on our roof. This is taken from our son Jack's drone about 100 feet above our house. So um, on solar panels, for the details, please read the chapter in the book to evaluate the lease loan or cash purchase options. Uh, same thing, please read chapter four. Um, and also about the subsidies and low interest financing. And I do not recommend solar hot water panels or solar thermal panels, another one of these things that makes energy sense, but does not make financial sense.